Hello everyone, my name is George Slatkovsky and today we are looking at a new update for GS Curve Tools version 1.2.5. So I've scaled Maya for better visibility on YouTube and in this update the main focus is on UV editor window and also the layers uh, workflow, the regroup by layer function to be precise. So let's start with the UV editor. So let's open it up and you'll see that it looks pretty much the same. Um, but the major improvement for this uh, editor is that now you can view non-square textures in it. So uh, before this version, uh, version 1.2 and uh, so on, uh, you couldn't use uh, non-square textures over here. They were incorrectly scaled. Uh, right now they will be scaled to the uh, 0 to 1 um, texture space, just like Maya does. It will be basically stretched if it's not square. So if we look at this texture map over here and go to the material over here, you will see that this is basically a non-square texture, as you can see, just like that. But if we look at the UV editor of GS Curve Tools, you'll see that it is now uh, scaled correctly. And if you look at the Maya UV editor, for example, you'll see that it is uh, basically the same. So they are now completely um, identical. So now you can use non-square textures uh, and uh, there will be no issues with that. So another major improvement of the UV editor is that you can now view your alpha map as well. So you can uh, see the transparency of your texture map right in the UV editor. And if we select uh, this texture map, for example, and expand this new options tab over here, you'll see that we have a toggle uh, that will allow you to enable the alpha. And uh, you'll see that there is a tooltip as well. So if you click on this, you will see that now you have uh, full transparency, uh, full support of transparency in the UV editor. Uh, but there is another issue that arises from that, is that it's kind of hard to see uh, the strands of hair uh, just uh, with this uh, color scheme over here. But what uh, you can do now is you can change the editor colors as well. So this is another feature that was added in this version. So for example, let's uh, go ahead and change the editor colors over here. So we can click uh, like that and for example, change the background, background to something a little bit lighter. Uh, and if you hover over those uh, swatches, you can see the tooltips and grid color can be a little bit um, something similar to this color, just like that. And this is a frame color. I think it will be black. And as you can see, the frame color is now black and those uh, grid textures are a little bit of a grayish color over here. We can even like make them a little bit less visible, just like that. That's, that's good enough. And now you can see that you can uh, actually see the texture map uh, very easily, just like that. And of course, everything else is, stays the same. You can still uh, zoom in and out. You can uh, pan and stuff like that. So nothing changes in that regard. Now, those colors will um, be persistent uh, between scenes, between projects. Uh, they are saved automatically. And if you want to reset them, you'll have to reset the entire, um, like the options of the curve tools using this button and then, then will be reset basically to the factory default. So that's the edges row colors and alpha map. Now the next thing is the transform toggle over here. So now you can actually view transforms of the texture map inside of the curve tools UV editor. So let me explain. If you look at this map over here, for example, let me just find it. You'll see that it's uh, a little bit weird, right? It's not like a square uh, texture map and uh, there's something weird with it. And if we go to the texture map itself over here and we will go to... Uh, actually, you know what? Let me just show you in the hyper, uh, hyper shade. It will be a little bit more intuitive this way. So if we go, for example, to our hyper shade and we'll go to the diffuse, over here, you'll see that we have a Lambert that has a like a file connected to color plug over here. And we also have this place to detexture node that basically controls the transform the transformations of uh, this file of this texture that is plugged in the color plug over here. So what you can do is go here and change your coverage and translate frame. So this can be useful if, if your texture is not uh, texture map is not uh, 
like a standard size or something like that, you can change its coverage and translate frame. Let me just open the default UV editor and show you what it does. Um, so let's see, uh, look at this. Now, if I change uh, the coverage, it will stretch. Uh, the This coverage will, uh, Y coordinate will stretch it like that. And translate fra frame will basically translate it uh, horizontally and vertically just like that and now this translation can be understood by the uv editor of curve tools if we select this thing and you will see that now it's basically uh, understands uh, what those coverage and translate frames are and it will apply those translations over here and this transform uh, button basically enables that so you can disable it of course but by default it's enabled and you can now use those coverage and translate frame rotate frame is not supported yet and uh, as well as all of these options over here the um, the repeat uv the offset the rotate uv noise uv those are not supported so it's just coverage and translate frame but that should be enough if you need to adjust your texture map at some point and use some different values over here so by default, those are just like that. Those are one and those are zero. And if you go over here and enable and disable transform, you'll see that nothing changes because this is the default state and it will basically ignore all of those options. So now, alpha map, transform and colors, those are new features for the UV editor in this version. Now, the next feature in this update is a new layer names and colors window. Well, you already had this window before and uh, there are some changes to it. As you can see, we are now uh, able to name our layers to whatever we want. So layer one, layer two, and so on. And you can also save those names as presets. So just like before you had the color presets, now you have uh, with those colors, you can also save the names of the layers. So if we, for example, uh, load preset over here, you'll see that my layer, uh, layer C, E, templates, and all of that is now loaded from the global preset. You can also save uh, those things as presets. So if you uh, press on save as preset, you will uh, just save them. And then you can load it anywhere from any project. Also, as before, you can change all of the colors. So why do you need that? Why do you need those names over here, right? This is very useful because when you use regroup by layer, so before you could only like type some uh, some name over here and those names will be uh, this name will be the names of the regrouped uh, layers and uh, just the number will change so now each layer when you're regrouping will be named accordingly to uh, those names that you type in over here and if you just leave them blank it will uh, use the default name so let's try it let's regroup by layer and you will see so the first mistake, I did not set to, to this thing to scene. So before the, uh, we regroup, let's just undo this and set to scene. So now it is applied to the scene. And now we can regroup by layer and you'll see that we have my layer zero, my layer one, default names because we haven't set the names over here. And now layer C, another default name because the 16th layer is not named and then templates. So this is really easy to organize your layers now. You can re regroup them anytime at any point in your um, process of making hair. And now you will have the organized outliner as well over here. So as I already said, you can get from scene. For example, if you have some uh, layers stored here, uh, layer names stored in the scene, you can get from, from scene and it will populate it uh, here. You can set to scene if you change something or if you type, type new layers over here, you can also load global preset and you can save as preset. Those will be saved to the global preset and you will be able to load them from anywhere. The other features of this layer customization window are the same that uh, was, was before. You can colorize regroup layers and you can sync uh, curve colors to layer colors. For example, you will see that my colors are uh, my curves are now changed uh, their colors accordingly to this uh, those swatches over here to this preset. And if we regroup this layer again, uh, regroup by layer, uh, since we used the colorized regroup layers option over here, those layers will be uh, colorized as well. So this is very useful for organization. Uh, 
let me just make them transparent so you can see. Uh, as you can see, they are all, all now basically uh, different colors and you will be able to distinguish them easily. So the last addition to this update is this convert select, uh, selected Bezier curves to NURBS. So if you, for example, use Bezier curves in the older project, uh, you cannot use it anymore, by the way. But if you used and opened uh, older projects and you want, uh, want to work on them, you can now convert them to NURBS without the loss of information, basically. Um, so this is a small fix that I've added uh, just for those older projects that uh, need that. So that was it for this update, a very small one, but I think that the UV editor improvements will be very helpful for people who use uh, non-square texture maps. Yeah, I still recommend uh, you using the square maps whenever it's possible, but uh, uh, if you cannot use it and you use non-square, feel free, it will now work properly. Uh, UV editor was improved a little bit as well, now that it's a little bit faster to pan and move around so it should be uh, a little bit easier to use it so yeah all of the links will be in the description as well as timestamps and uh, where to get the plugin you can also find there so thank you for watching see you next time